Hello, I am Einar Gade Jørgensen, born the 16th of November 1934. I served two years in the Danish Army Sledge Patrol Sirius from August 1957 to August 1959. I came from the Signal Radio Signal Corps as a sergeant. The first year I was a new man and drove with last year's new man, who was now the old man. As a new man, you had to learn about the sledge stalks and surviving in the Arctic. As the old man, your job was to pass on the skills and knowledge as your new man. My old man was the chief of Sirius, Lieutenant Paul Adam Seam. The next year, my new man was next year's chief of the patrol, Lieutenant Paul Erik Damkær. My first trip with Lieutenant Seam was in February to June to receive air drops of provisions from a Catalina. The provision drops were for the next year's patrol further north. What I did not know at the time was that it would be myself and my colleagues who would take the journey north. When we came the next year, on patrol, a polar bear had eaten all the provisions. Here we inspect one of the kerosene dunks, which did not survive the drop. We also received a box with delicious food made by the cook in Mestersvi, around 400 kilometers south of our position. The Catalina dropped very well nearby the hut where we were staying, so we did not have to run around and collect all the boxes. Here you can see a box which landed three meters from our leading dog. That was a little too good. In the box we received from the cook in Mestersvi was also two beers which we had to drink, otherwise it would freeze. After the drop was over, we continued to Britannia Lake. First, we went on to Gottfried Hansen's Bay. The yellow star is Cap Emily, and the red one is Simpson Expedition. This was what we call it in Sirius for short. And you can see the route we followed. On our way, we saw this iceberg. It had tipped around and taken a chunk of soil with it, which now was placed on top of the iceberg. When we came up on Storstrømmen, we continued in the direction of Ymer's Nunatak. Lieutenant Seam had been in contact with Commander Simpson, who advised us to continue until we were in a position 
where we were on a straight line between the Umos Nunatak and the Academy Gletscher. First, then, we should turn in the direction and down the Academy Gletscher, which went down to Britannia Lake. All this was to avoid the crevasses around Queen Louise's land. We passed a snow car, which was landed in a crevasse and had been left by the expedition as it was impossible to save. Today it is buried in the ice. The last trip down the academic lecture was rather exciting. We zigzagged between ice and snow, and the dogs ran faster and faster. Luckily, we got control over the dogs and stopped them. Driving over the ice edge would have been quite unpleasant. From Britannia Lake, we drove over to the expedition area and was welcomed to Britannia Lake by this sign made by the crew in 1952. We moved into the main building and lit up the oil furnace. And so it looked in 1958. All was almost as when the expedition had left in 1954. We could use the petrol and eat what was left of food. Well, mostly oatmeal. The expedition was a big one, with 25 people living at Britannia Lake the first year. 16 stayed for two years, and some scientists were relieved after the first year by others from home. With Her Majesty the Queen as patron, and as vice patron Sir Winston Churchill, it was not so difficult to raise money for the expedition. This picture is taken during 52 and 1954. But the next pictures are my own recordings taken in 1958. After 1958, the Academy Glitcher, which you can see in the background, it started to advance and Sirius did not know this, so a new patrol would really get a surprise. 
This is the edge and the eyes in 1958. And in 73, here. In 1973, 15 years after our visit, another sledge patrol had read our report and decided to go there and have a good time. The sledge patrol in 73 followed another route which was not easy, but they arrived and could not at first find the station. In the end they found it. These pictures show the station when we were there in 1958. In the end they found it and they were not very happy at the site. The academy glacier had moved forward and the ice slowly was started to destroy all buildings. One night they spent in one of the remaining buildings but they preferred to use their tent. Half of the main building lay in a small river created by the ice. Here you can see the thermometer hot in 58 and how it looked in 73. If you want ice in your whiskey, this is the place to go. Here you can see the expedition site and the academic lecture in the background. In the summer of 1974, a helicopter visited the site and then most of the station was gone. After 1974, there has been no visit to Britannia Lake. And this is the end of the story. All buildings are gone, but I suppose the expeditions, reports and scientific papers are still around. If we ever get a new ice age in Northern Europe, then you can imagine what will happen. The ice will have smashed all buildings, houses and gardens. Then we will have to start all over again. This is the edge of the ice in 1973. In 2005, according to Google, the ice had moved to this point. 
Back to 1958. We left Britannia Lake and climbed the glacier, not without problems, but not more than is normal for a sledge patrol to manage. All the pictures are from the years 1958, 1973 and 1974. The sound tracks were made at Sirius Danebor in 1959 and added later. You will find the pictures on another DVD in a better resolution than can be made from this video.